Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, still here just outside uh, St. Burian in my uh, get out quick and just do a couple of videos because they need to get up uh, location. So this is my sort of quick and dirty, <laughs> just get out somewhere and then shoot the video quick. Uh, carrying on in our series on equity release, uh, we looked last time at uh, the alternatives to equity release and why you would want to do it at all. Um, and this time we're looking at the main type of equity release contract or product, which is the lifetime mortgage. Uh, as ever though, before we get into the meat of that, I must thank my good friends down here in the bottom right, that's Seven Investment Management, who sponsor Meaningful Money, and I'm very grateful to them for doing so. So, uh, lifetime mortgages, okay, they are the main sort of type of equity release scheme. There are others, uh, specifically the Home Reversion Plan, which I'm going to come to next time. But there are four types, really. See, nothing's ever simple, is it? Four types of lifetime mortgage, which we need to be aware of. The first one is called the Home Income Plan. Now, you don't see so many of these anymore, but how a Home Income Plan worked is you would borrow a sum of money against the value of your house. So let's just say uh, you had a £100,000 house and you would borrow £25,000, 25% of the value. Well, what would happen with that £25,000 then, it would go to buy an annuity, a guaranteed income. And all the details about annuities, which we've looked at in previous videos, would apply. Uh, so, you know, depending on your age and gender and health, you know, you could get different uh, incomes. But the crux of it is, you release a capital sum from the value of your home by borrowing it from a mortgage lender, and you receive um, uh, that lump sum goes to buy an annuity, uh, thereby giving you a fixed income for life. Okay, so all the pros and cons of annuities and things like that uh, apply. Now, before I sort of s s say what is, you know, happens to the interest, because you've borrowed that twenty-five thousand. Okay, so that you know that doesn't come free. There's interest to be paid on it. And before I just mention that though, I'm just going to talk, talk about the second type. So if that's home income plans, the second type is cash schemes, right? And that's much simpler because rather than um, the lump sum that you borrow being used to buy an annuity and that's sort of done for you, with a cash scheme, you get the lump sum to do with what you want. So they're very similar, but with a home income plan, the income is all wrapped into the product. Uh, because you sort of buy an annuity and that's all sort of done for you as part of the, the overall solution. With a cash scheme, it's dead simple. You borrow the money and you do what you want with the money. It goes into your bank account, into an investment, into an ISA, into an annuity if you want, but you can do what you want with it. So they're similar, but subtly different. Uh, the cash scheme, you get to, uh, you got more flex flexibility as to what you do with the money. But on both of those, something's got to happen to the interest. You've borrowed this money, uh, it doesn't come for free, and you've simply got two choices. Either you can pay the interest off every month, just the interest, so you're not actually paying down your mortgage, you're just paying the interest, or you can let the interest roll up. So, you know, every month, the interest payable on the loan, you don't pay it, it just gets added to the amount you owe. And of course, then you're paying interest on that interest, so you're getting compounded interest against you then. So that's cash schemes, right? Home income plans and cash schemes. Thirdly, we've got drawdown schemes. Now, rather than just borrow a lump sum of money and that drops in your bank account, with a drawdown scheme, what you're effectively doing is setting up a facility. So you're agreeing with your home equity release lender uh, that they will give you a facility of, say, £25,000, and you can draw down on that whenever you want. There are usually some limits and time limits and things like that, but you can draw down on it whenever you want. So let's say you set up this facility for 25,000, but all you need right now is 10,000 to buy a new car. So you've got another 15,000 pounds there in your facility ready when you need it. So that's a sort of very flexible way, uh, approach uh, of doing it. But it, there's some important term benefits there because if you're only borrowing a smaller amount to start with, you're only paying interest on that smaller amount. So there's less interest payable. And if you're rolling up the interest, there's less compounding as well. So it's a cheaper way of doing it. Quite an attractive option, really, a drawdown option. Because you can also use that facility and draw off it monthly. 
So it's like an income coming into your bucket every month. Um, you know, eventually your facility will run down. That's quite important. But you know, it's just a flexible way of doing it. So that's a drawdown scheme. Finally, then, probably the most different. You've got those three. They're all similar in a way. They're all a sort of um, a mortgage, and you borrow some money and you pay interest on it, either rolling it up or paying it off every month. But the fourth one is called a shared appreciation mortgage. And so it's still a mortgage, includes in the title. It's still a mortgage. You borrow the 25000 on the value of your house. But instead of charging you interest, what the lender will do is they will secure a portion of the increase in the value of your property over time. So they will say, yes, we will lend you 25000 but in return, we want one third of the increase in the value of your property between you taking out the mortgage and when you die or go into long-term care. So there's no interest payable as such. Instead, you're giving away a portion of the increase in the value of your property. So, you know, that can be quite an attractive option. Depends what you think about, um, you know, property prices going up. It's more risky to the lender, I suppose, particularly if property prices are not going up. But that's how a shared appreciation mortgage works. So we've got four main types of a lifetime mortgage. The home income plan, where the sort of loan and the annuity is all bought as part of a solution. You've got cash schemes, where you just draw down your, you know, your pot of money. You do what you want with it, but you do it all in one go. And you've got drawdown schemes where you have a facility and you can draw off it as you want. And then fourthly, you've got shared appreciation mortgages where there's no interest per se. You're just giving up a portion of the increase in the value of your property over time. So four main types of a lifetime mortgage. So the main alternative to those, though, is something called home reversion plans. And that's uh, the topic for next time. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time for home reversion plans.